What's the strangest thing you've done on the figure eight to get a muskie to hit? Tell me in the comments below. My buddy used a dead stick technique that was really cool that we're gonna look at coming up here. What's going on everybody? My name is Brian, you are watching Angling Anarchy, and on today's video we are going to explore some of these strange ways to get muskies to hit on the figure eight. The moment in question I'm going to talk about was on a trip back in 2016. We were up on Eagle Lake, actually we were on Blue Lake and we were driving over to fish muskies on Eagle Lake because it was the week of the muskie opener. And we got into a really good feeding window. Um, I think my friend Jim got a 47 and a half. Got her, we got her, we got her. Oh my <laughs> Shortly thereafter, uh, unfortunately the cameras weren't running when the fish hit, but I got a giant 49 and a half incher on a top water. Wow, we ran into some really rough weather. Unfortunately, we had to cover the GoPros up, so we didn't catch that strike, but that was a, an awesome strike on a top water bait, a big fish. We'll get a tape on her here. Get her bumped. Well, we were back in a bay, tucked away from the weather. I could tell the wind was blowing a little bit, but it wasn't until we got to the main lake uh, and we got to see the full force of what we were going to have to deal with. The winds were blowing 40, 50 miles an hour. It took us an hour to get across the main body of the lake because we had to go this way and the wind was coming this way. There was no way around it. So uh, needless to say, we got quite wet. So I'm telling you this because we had to, after that, give up fishing Eagle Lake because the wind had stirred the lake up so bad that we had to choose one of the smaller lakes in the area. We decided to go to Indian Lake, which is a small lake just north. Uh, it's right around Vermilion Bay. Uh, a little north and west of Vermilion Bay. So we went there. It's a really cool lake. It's a numbers lake. Uh, there's not a ton of big fish, although there are some there. Earlier that week, Nate had read an article in a Muskie Hunter magazine by Steve Hiding, and he was talking about different techniques to use on a figure eight. Aside from the normal big oval or just the figure eight, he was talking about a couple different things you can do. Most of those things, I, I don't remember what they were, but the one that Nate got to work was the one that was most interesting to me. In the article, Steve talked about just doing a dead stick, literally coming into the figure eight and just leaving the bait sit. It seemed counterintuitive to me. 
he, if I remember right, he said in the article he hasn't seen it work a ton, but it was just something to try. So Nate had seen quite a few fish come in and just couldn't get them going on the eight. So he decided at one point, let's give this dead stick thing a try. Fish, 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 fish. Dude, you hit him too hard. <sighs> Damn it. Oh. You hit him too hard, I think. That was a nice fish. Hell was. The first time he tried it, he comes in, goes alongside the boat, and just hangs it. Doesn't even go into a full figure eight. I think we'd had enough fish give up on us that he thought, what the heck, we'll try it. Much to both of our surprise, as the bait came up to the top of the water, the muskie came like this, put its nose on it, and just sort of opened its mouth and sucked the bait in. It was really cool to watch. This is the bait we were using. It's a 5-inch mini, uh, Custom X mini, uh, an older one with the Lexan lip, but this is the bait we were using. So as this bait rose to the top, the muskie got in under it and literally opened its mouth and the bait just kind of got sucked in. Nate was so flabbergasted by it, and so was I quite honestly, that he set the hook way too hard and we didn't get that fish. As luck would have it, about 15 minutes later, he had another fish come in, so he did the exact same thing. Came in, uh, barely did a full figure eight and just let the bait sit there. Sure enough, the fish came up and popped it, and this time he was successful at landing it. We've seen this work a couple other times, although it's one of those things where you don't necessarily want to use it because for the most part, a fish is going to want that bait sped up and moving and going different directions. We used it that particular day because that wasn't working. Uh, that we were on a numbers body of water, we'd had multiple fish to the boat and doing the regular old thing was not working, so it was time to employ something kind of crazy and just so happened that it worked. So I'm sure you guys out there have had silly stuff like this work before. And like I said in the beginning, let me know what it was. It'd be interesting to hear some stories. Uh, leave it in the comments below. One other thing I wanted to talk about that I've seen work that is a little bit weird is after I've gone around the figure eight multiple times and it just doesn't seem like I can get the fish to go, I have actually employed the technique of putting the bait on top of the water and literally flopping it back and forth like that. Uh, I believe there's a video out there of Bob Masick Homer and one of his clients uh, getting a fish to go a figure eight uh, on a bucktail and then just taking the buck bucktail, flopping it around and eventually the fish hits it. I've never had a fish caught using that technique, but I have had two fish try to eat the bait. So that's something else uh, to consider when nothing else seems to be working. All right, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this little blast from the past. Uh, I've been going through this old footage I have and sort of uh, trying to do something with it, uh, trying to do something, uh, I don't know if you call this educational, but just something where hopefully somebody out there learns something or, or thinks to do it when nothing else seems to be working, and hopefully it will work for somebody out there. I want to address one thing real quick. Uh, I usually am leaving for Eagle Lake in Ontario uh, coming up here very shortly. Unfortunately, with all the lockdowns from the coronavirus, COVID-19, whatever you want to call it, 
that's not happening for so for the first time in since 1993 i'll not be going to canada in the spring which is a, a bummer beyond belief i can't even begin to uh, express how much it uh, it bums me out that we're not going to be doing that so in the meantime uh, i'll be fishing close to home madison maybe going up to northern wisconsin we'll see what happens uh, I know there's a lot of people that have already said, why don't you go to Minnesota? Why don't you go to another lake? Uh, I, that's a possibility. I really would like to save the two weeks that I usually go up to Eagle Lake to go to Eagle Lake, though, because uh, the people we stay with are, are dear friends. And I know there's a push to keep uh, tourism and money in the United States, but I would love to go see my Canadian friends and give them some of my money to let me stay there as well. So... Um, all things we have to consider in these crazy times that we are living in. But with that, I hope all of you are having better luck than I am so far this season. I am uh, riding the struggle bus right now uh, as of the filming of this. Hopefully that is going to change soon here um, for the sake of my sanity and for the sake of having some good new videos for you guys to watch. We eclipsed the 3,000 subscriber mark, so that's exciting. So thank you, everyone uh, that subscribed. Thanks, everyone that watches. It uh, really means a lot to me. I appreciate it. And that's it. That's all I got. I will see you on the next video.